Hi, my name's Espresso, and the next, whoa, I blink of a fish's eye. I don't have eyelids, so it's going to be a long time. No, it's not. The next blink of a fish's eye, what we're going to do is enhance how you currently jig, improve your jigging technique, and learn the number one question that you need to ask before you drop a lure, a bait, anything in the water. The number one question, we'll go over that in a minute. The technique will be done by Edward Lee, absolute professional master lure fisherman and jigger from around the world to be with us in just a couple of minutes. But in the meantime, you've got me. Sorry. So, lures, fishing, jigging, how are we gonna improve our technique? Okay, we're going out fishing tomorrow morning. Yes, let's go! So what do fish eat? Live bait. Fish eat fish, that's it. Live, whole, in part, healthy, injured. They eat live bait, simple put. Fish eat fish. So what about lures, jigs, soft baits, all that type of thing? We're here to talk about jigging. Okay, live bait, we're trying to take out live bait tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, let's go fishing. We're trying to take out live bait. But lures are enhanced live bait. We can enhance, accentuate in a lure everything that mother nature triggers for a fish to come over and take a bite. We don't have to go out and catch live bait in the morning for hours at the critical time where you should be fishing for kingfish, you're mucking around with sabiki rigs catching mackerel. Oh joy. So, Lures, soft bait, whether it's slow pitch and chick, all sorts of different names, these are live bait. So you, the fisherman, M slash N, non-gender Pacific, mm, fisherman, you're out there with me tomorrow morning, we're going fishing, fish eat whole fish, but we're using lures. So with your lures, what we have is an array of menu items. Instantly, in a tackle box, we haven't gone to catch it in the morning, we've got it a week or two before, and we're set up. Simply put, we are now using the technical aspects, science, what we know about fish. Well, we know, for instance, that snapper have the similar eyes to us with rods and cones seeing motion color just like us. They can even hear a voice like us, except it's more like Barry White where they can hear it's kind of down there. They don't get all the high stuff. So we know where their pitch is, we know what they're looking at. Now, we as fishermen can trick a fish into taking a bite, whether it's hungry or not. Okay, whether it's hungry or not. We are using our brains to override what a fish thinks is a live bait. A fish thinks that's a live bait when we use it properly. So the lures, you're not using up 20,000 tons of bait fish that's just taken out of the, around the coast of the New Zealand. You're not taking away the bait or food chain supply for predators. What do you think happens to predators? You don't have bait smell on you. You don't stink and reek of dead, stinking old bait when you come home. There is no smell. Your cleanup in the boat is standing there with a hose just to wash salt off and scales from the fillets off the fish. There is no smell. These gloves were used on Saturday to catch fish. They do not smell because there's no bacteria from the bait. Bait's great, so were flares back in the 70s. So we have lures that are live bait. They are representative of all the different live bait we could go out there and catch tomorrow morning. The nearly extinct turtle, the Maui dolphin, piper, mackerel, pilchers, whatever you like. You've now got them to use in any way you see fit at the time what Mother Nature has brought to you. Too much wind, less current, no movement. Adjust your lures, not like a live bait, a live bait, the kingfisher, 40 meters down over there. Cool, I got a live bait, a mackerel. And it swims over there with your balloon. Fantastic. No, we've got a kingfish 40, 50 meters over there. We want an arc of action, very narrow. This would have an arc, in action, arc of action, very wide. It would flutter all over the place. I want the fish the lure there because the kingfish are right there. You'd use something like a squid wing, a very narrow arc of action, five degrees. It's gonna target the fish that we wanna catch. Not the kawai over there, I want the kingfish there on the sounder. So we're using lures to target the species that we're after, the size, where we're at with the 
mother nature ingredients that were presented at the time where we are fishing. So lures overcome the shortcomings of live bait and they're enhanced. They are supernatural. Okay, you're out there. You're a supernatural fisherman now. You're elevated above the rest. You have lures that can trick a fish. We're playing mind games with a fish. Okay, fish have a very small brain. And most of us, half me mates, We'll overcome that by just using our brain. Now, that's easy. So which fish, I said which fish? Which jig we go from? Micro jigs, to slow pitch, mechanical jigs, squid wings way out on its own, or the freestyle kabura, which somebody has just taken from me. Somebody's nicked it, oh good. Here's the number one question you need to ask when you go out fishing next, before you do anything, you've got out, there's fish under there. Here's the question. Is the bite on or is it off? Ask yourself, is mother nature, the fish gagging for it, are they on the bite or is it off? Assume that it's off. The first lure you're gonna use is the freestyle kabura. It's the most prolific fish catching device bar none. Put it down, wind it up, come over and have a look in the catch tanks and you'll see it flare. It flares in the water, why? Because it has buoyant skirts. So it comes up and it becomes alive in the water. Come and have a look in the tanks and twiddle it yourself, work it yourself. So the number one lure that you use when the bite is off is a kabura. okay? If the bite's on, take it off. You need to then move into upper action, more aggressive action, and then you would use something like a slow pitch lure. A slow pitch lure flutters down through the water column, down through the water column, like all the dead bait fish coming from the sky, coming from the heavens down towards, the, say, the snapper on the seafloor, or past the kingfish midwater. A slow pitch lure, you might use a micro jig, just a little candy, a little jet paint, a little chocolate eclair. Even if they're full at the end of the night, you can put a lolly in your mouth, soak in a fish. Micro jig, go to a slow pitch, it's a completely different action. And Edward is gonna show you how to do the slow pitch action and mechanical jigs. Your rod is to work the lure. I'll say that again, it's that important. Your rod that you buy is to work the lure in the best possible way to look like the imitation live bait that we've got. So we go from micro jigs to slow pitch, and then we'll get something like that, like a Nchiku. And in chiku jig, it's a sneeze. See that thing sneezing around there like that? The fish is after the skirt. It is an in chiku jig with an erratic, massive motion. And this is when the bite is on. The bite is on using an chiku jig. Or maybe a soft bait will go up real hard and high into a something out on its own. A squid wing, top water, mid water, jigging, trolling, you name it. It's way out there, your left field, okay? Worth trying, not sure what's going on, put down a squid wing. But what you have is an array of lures up to a mechanical jig. Mechanical jig for kingfish. Ah, but this one's special, double trouble. Rig it this way, it'll flutter. Rig it that way, now you have a mechanical jig targeting kingfish. Rig it this way, you have a fluttering jig targeting kingfish, but also snapper. You've got a double action jig. So you have so many actions in your jigs, much more than you can with a live bait. So these are your imitation live bait that you take within a pack and go out there and hunt fish. This is about us as anglers having informed decisions. It's not about branding, it's not about what we're doing up on the boat, it's about putting in front of the fish what you think the fish might take a bite. What are they gonna choose? I have no idea. What are you gonna choose? Choose one, and if it doesn't work, choose another. That's the freestyle kabura. When the bite is off, Use a kabura. These are buoyant skirts. First up, get fish in the bin. It'll catch every fish there is. Bites off, use a kabura. If the bite's on, take it off. Save this for when the bite's off. Then go up. And what lure you use? What weight? Oh, that's easy. What weight lure? What, what water depth are you fishing in? 20 meters? Times it by two. Sorry times it by two. <laughs> because the meters of water you're in, 20 meters times two, 40 grams. You're in 50 meters, times it by two, 100 grams. You're in 250 meters, 
Ah, bring out the big five and 750 gram squid wing. Mand them, 500 grams. Ah, down to four, 500 meters. Yeah, 250 meters, you'll need 500 grams. Micro jig, same as a soft bait. Really devastating, but you can use it in shallow water. So you've got everything from zero feet down to six, seven, 800 meters in a box going out with a little wee light rod. So your imitation live bait, you have everything at your disposal because you're the angler that decides, is the bite on or off? If it's off, kabura. If it's on, everything else, try it. Now I can't tell you about each individual one, we just simply don't have time. Come over to the catch stand, work the jigs yourselves on the rods to see what the fish see. Not what the packet says. See what the fish see, see what you're doing, and your fishing will change, because you'll go, ah, oh, there'll be it, there'll be that, ah, oh, betcha, we'll hear it. Now, I need you to take back control with your fishing. Get some lures, target the fish, the size, the species that you're after with the right lure. What weight, two times the meters, there you go, there's your weight. Which lure? Over to you. Choose one. Choose another, see what's working. Change the color, the shape, the action. Ha! Huh. And here we go. Edward's gonna come and show you the technique to use on the rod to make these things come alive, okay? So, how important is the jig? How important is the vibration, the arc of action, the contrast of colors, whether it's got luminous dots or shapes on it? the eye with a dot in the center, how long, everything that goes into this jig. There are literally hundreds of different factors that goes into a jig to make it work for you, the angler. But there's only one thing that you need to know when you're buying a lure, a jig, a soft bait, micro jig. How important is that lure? It's everything. Did you hear it? It's everything. That jig is your life. You go out there and you've got a packet of stinking old pilchard. Great. You're probably going to come home with stinking hands, not a lot of fish or a lot of throwbacks. The jig, what the fish sees, is everything. It's the only thing the fish sees. Your boat, your sounder, your rod, your reel, they can't see a thing. They see the lure and how it's presented in front of them. And that is your job. You know the weight. You know what you to use when the bite's off, and then when the bite's on, slow pitch, squid wings, soft bait, micro jigs, mechanical jigs, your choice. Overcome the fish's brain with your own, choose a lure, put it down there, target the fish you want, and catch the fish. So the jig is everything, okay? Get the right lure, the right weight, the right depth, your fishing success massively changes like that. Now I'm going to have up here in just a second, Edward Lee, he is the master professional fisherman. He is a master of jigging, of lure techniques. He is a worldwide known jigging master. His technique is outstanding. Look at what he's doing and what he's saying of how you're working the rod. The rod is to work the lure. Work the lure well, Dreams do come true. You don't have to hold the fish close to the camera. You're struggling. That's the difference. Okay, Edward's gonna be here in 60 seconds to show you the technique to work the lures. Yeah, you ready? Hi everyone, my name is Edward Lee. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. So today I'm here, I'm just gonna teach you guys how, some technique, the movement about how you uh, work out your rod and the reel when you're Ooh. jigging. So I had this Kensai rod of catch. Uh, this is a slow pitch rod, a Kensai rod, which uh, we do slow jigging. It's a little bit uh, different than the jigging style that you guys does. I know New Zealander, normally when you're jigging, you go like that. Very fast, very fast, very fast, very fast, very fast. Okay, that's totally different. Now we do slow jigging. We do it slow. When you jig, you use your wrist. You use the reel to wind, not the, not the left hand. So most likely slow jigging is like this. If the current is going that way towards, current, towards grand, I'll pull the jig up with my handle. You see it? I pull it up with my handle. And when I wind, I go down. I pull up again. So I always jig with my right hand, not my left hand. My left hand doesn't move at all. So this is how you do slow pitch. You jig up your bait, one, 
You want in every time you jig, so your jig winds up, flutter, goes up, flutter, you're searching the fish. So every time you go, you wind. You go, you wind. And for, for 10 meters, you, you stop. You don't wind. You just flick it. Flick it. Flick it. No fish bite. Moving up again. Another 10 meters. You're searching. 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters, and you drop again. That's low jigging. Okay? And this is the current going that way. Okay? So if the current, if the current is going left, slow jigging, we don't put the, put the rod back over here. It's on your arm. It's on your arm. So we do like that. So when he's there, this one goes sideways. You're using this thing, same. See, every time, flick it, flick it, flick it. No bite, wine, moving, wine, moving, wine, moving. That's slow jigging. So you tease it at the front, slow jigging. When the fish not biting, you can go a little bit fast, 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 and then drop again. So this is another style we, I teach you guys when the current going forward that way, left way, is sideways like that. So if, if, current, if the current is going that way, it's another, another style. You open up your armpit. You open up your armpit. You had it over here. You're actually fishing like that. You're pushing the handle with your hand. You jig like this. You kind of jig like that. Flick it. Why? Flick it. You're using your armpit sideways because the current going that way. If you do like this, it's going to tangle up on the tips. So current go that way. Open your armpits. Follow your rod and your line sideways. Flick it like that. Under your armpits this way. Like this. That's slow jigging, slow jigging. And when you hook up a fish, don't go too hard. Just wait for the fish to find a little bit first and wind it up slowly. Cause slow jigging rods, mo uh, most likely we develop the rod to flick the jig, uh, less power to fight the fish. But we developed this one very strong so you can give it a go. Now it's um, vertical jigging. I know we don't have much time so I speak very fast. Okay, vertical jigging. I want you guys to move your wrist when you're jigging. It's not like this. It's you're moving your wrist. You're moving your wrist. Your wrist is moving. Your wrist is moving. Your leg is moving. Your body is moving. All the power comes from your leg. You twist your leg first and then you move your body. So jigging is very easy. You don't waste no energy at all. Go slow with the rhythm. Okay? Some technique. Vertical jigging. Like that overhead. Okay? Hits the bottom, flick it. When you jig, just, go, just don't go too high like that. At the beginning, give it a four or six small one like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One big one. The fish will always hit on that, that pause, that free fall. It's just like you guys see from Ben, you know, the nomad guy. Every time the stick may move, when you pause, that's what the fish want to hit. That's a hit zone you create for the fish. You're teasing the fish, try to make the fish to pay attention to your bait. When you're flicking it, walking the dog, whatever. But when you pause it, that's the timing where the fish want to strike. So when I jig, same. One, two, three, four. Is it hit? No hit. Why? Why? Flick again. Hit? No. So you always try to create a hit zone. That's why I kind of exactly know when I'm going to catch a fish. You, and sometimes you feel the fish when it's chasing your bait. When you jig, 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 you feel some, some current is pushing your bait, getting lighter. King is at the back chasing your jig. You can feel it. So chuk, 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 give it a big one and pause it. Boom, he'll take it. And then, a little bit more technique about fighting the fish. So, if you caught that king, right, at the beginning, boom, got it, wind, try to wind as much as you can. Don't put it at your gimbal at the beginning. So, it's like this, chuk, chuk, hook up, wind, 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 try to wind, try to wind, try to wind the best you can. And he's going to take off. Let him take off at the beginning. Keep the rod on your armpit. Take off one time, or when he stop, try to pump more. Take off two times, try to pump more. Every time you try to take off, when you pause, try to, try to take lines. Don't pull him. Because when he take off, you try to pull, and then he's going to go more. So always try to take line. And when the fish is stable, put it on your gimbal. Because I've seen a lot of people jigging like this. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Got it hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> this fish is moving around, and then he couldn't get it. That's not stable. The beginning, get it. Hook up. Ah, run, try to get more warning. Put it on the side for a little bit and put it in a gimbal. Slowly, slowly. And another thing, every time when you catch a kingy, you pull it up when you see color. When you see color, remember, put it back to your armpit. And he'll go under the boat, to the motor, to the side. So if you're over here, 
if you go under the boat, you break your rod and you break your snap your line. So the fish is color, you wind up and oh, where are you going? Oh, go under the boat. You have your rod stick down there so he can go under. The fish always doing circle. So he'll go in, circle. He'll come out and you pull him up, coming this way, gaff, in the boat. Yeah, that's a little bit of technique of uh, slow pitch jigging and vertigo jigging. Any questions, everybody, anybody want to ask about how, uh, no questions? Okay, I come up with one question to everyone. How do you set up your drag before you drop your jig? How do you set up your drag? You just set it up and like that, and you pull it with your hand? Is that how you guys set it? Nah, don't do that. Every time you set up a drag, put the reel on the rod, okay? Set it up and get the hook, hook the hook under the, the floor somewhere strong. And then you pull your rod, exactly. You put it on the strike position, put it exactly. See, now it's too light. I'm gonna go more. Strike position, see, that's too light. That's like 70% of this rod. I'm gonna put more. See? Okay, that's about 80%. See, the drag is going now. The drag is going, I can hear it. See, this is about 80%. It's not full, it's on strike position. It's full, that's more, you see? That's more. So every time we catch it, when you're jigging, you use the strike position. Beginning, the king can take lines after he runs three times. Boom, full drag. <clears throat> He's not going up because he took off three times already and then you have double power of the drag. So catch the king, let it run, let it run, second run, third run, and then we pause, full drag. Oh, he's not going anywhere. You feel the head shake. Oh, boom, boom, boom. And he'll turn, he'll turn his head back and you do the short pump. You get him. Okay, so remember every time you're fishing, when you find the fish, don't pull it up this high and whine like two times and whine three times. That way, you let the fish have a chance to turn the head. So every time when you have the fish towards you, do short pump. Just pump one time, pump one time, pump one time. When you pump, when you pump in it, Every time the handle's here. So when you pump it, every time, don't go this way, don't go that way. Every time, pump it, pump it. Every time when you pump in the fish, pump it, pump it, pump it. Just don't go here. So it's not smooth, so you pump it. When you pump the fish, right, short pump, you bend your knees a little bit. So it's gonna make it a lot easier. Oh, thanks a lot. That was me. No worries, man. It happens on the boat all the time. Yeah. The short pump. No worries. Any more questions for fishing that I can um, tell you some knowledge? Maybe I don't know, so I need more questions. More yeah, questions the drag. Time. It's very important about setting drag. That makes very big difference. So you think your drag is good, but you didn't. It's, you only use like maybe 60% of your gear. So if you can use 100%, 90%, why not? And the drag is very smooth. So easy, same. And then some, um, some little technique about the rhythm, some tricks. Okay, how about my jigging? I always go like this, the rhythm. Hits the bottom, go light. One, two, three, four. No bite, I wind one time, I wind one time. Five, no bite, I wind, I do a little bit more. And go one more higher, try to, try to create that, that big coming up and then that pause and that flitter, then the king will go, boop, will grab it. If you did it like a couple times, no bites, there's more tricks. Hits the bottom again, wind up very fast. 25 meter and hits the bottom again, why not very fast? 25 meter and hits the bottom again, why not? Five meter and start jigging, slow. Watch, you catch him. That's some technique. Imagine there's a school of fish. Hits the bottom, fast, something very fast, they cannot take it. They just excited, whoa, 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 something run around and then there's a school will come over you. Like, oh, something run around, more fish will come. And then on the third drop, tease them. It's like 10 fish, 15 fish, one of them is going to be stupid and get it. Yeah, you know, oh, what's that? You never know. So always keep on trying, trying different things to catch more fish. Good. Three minutes, any more questions? Back to, uh, any back to Grant. Any more Andrew? questions for me? And we've got three more minutes. The jiggings. Yes, sir. Okay, for jigging, right, always use braid at the front. And we tie a PR knot or FG knot. To me, I don't like to use nylon leader because nylon leader had a stretch. I like to use carbon leader. And nylon leader, when you hit the rock, boop, one second. But carbon leader, boop, maybe three seconds. So you gotta be careful. Carbon leader, I have time. Sometimes when I catch the fish, I feel it's ripping me. I just open up the spool. Another technique. When you find the fish, right? When you 
When you feel the reef is touching your back, just open up your spool. Why? Because the fish is going down for what? You pull him on the top, the fish is going down. Now you let it go. Where's the pressure come from? The fish have no idea. I'm going down. Oh, hey, he's going to go flat and he's going to come up. I had, had it so many times, the big, big monster king, I cannot handle because 150 meters of water. I caught that fish about up on the water, 10 meters. First run, second run. When every time he stopped, I cannot take one wine. I cannot wind my line. So second run, I notice if the third run is going to snap and hit the rock. So after the second run, I just open up my spool, hold on to it. Slow, very light. And then you feel the head shake. He's he swimming away and you slowly, slowly picking him up, slowly, you know, trick him. Slowly, slowly. He'll, he'll come up the bottom of maybe 40 meters and then full drag, fight. But be careful. I have time up on the water 40 meters, full, full drag, fight. Boom, 40 meters, go straight down to the bottom, pass, snap. It happens, big fish, you never know. So now, if I got him up on 40 meters, there's no fighting. Slowly, slowly bring him up on the surface and where's the cat? That's how you land big ones. You know, big one is very smart. Here we go. Here, uh, give it back to... Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I do better, Grant. Subscribe to our Catch YouTube channel and come fishing with us.